Hello everyone, in this video, we are going to cover amortization tables and how this impacts lease accounting. In this video, we're going to look at a very short example. ABC Limited entered into a lease agreement with Box Limited. The terms and conditions are as follows. The leased asset has a cash cost of 406,466. The lease term is four years. The commencement date of the lease is 1 January 2000. The lease payments, which are due annually in arrears, are 120,000. And the discount rate, the interest rate implicit in the lease, is 7%. The question tells you. Prepare the journal entries for the year ended 31 December 2000. And part B, disclose the lease liability in the statement of financial position as at 31 December 2001. So basically, as you can see, the question has spelled out the key components for us. And in terms of attempting part A, before you provide the journal entries, you would need to do your workings. And every single thing that's in this example will assist you directly in achieving correct workings. So your leased asset has a cash cost of 406466. That will be your present value. Your lease term will be four years. And remember, because lease payments are due annually, it also means that your period of compounding will occur annually. The commencement date that they've given you is 1 Jan 2000, and your effective interest rate that you are going to use in your amortization table will be 7%. Now, let's see how this works. So the first step in terms of tackling this question is to basically draft out an amortization table based on the information provided above. So in terms of our amortization table, we'll always need to have the date. The interest is very important. The repayment is another component and the balance also needs to be computed. The question mentioned to us that the lease term is four years. So we need to take this into account in our date column. And the first date that you will insert is your commencement date of the lease of 1 January 2000. On this date, the balance was 406466. The next important date will be your year end, 31 December 2000. And at 31 December 2000, what will happen is you first need to calculate your interest and then you take the repayment into account. So the question provided us a discount rate of 7%. Okay, so we can easily put a formula 406466 multiplied by 7% gives us 28,453 less your repayment, which is 120,000. And then your balance at the end of 31 December 2000 will be your opening balance of 406466 plus your interest of 28453 plus or minus your repayments of 120,000 rands. And that's how you arrive at 314919. And just as how you did that for year one, you will do the exact same thing for the remaining life of the lease. So let me just fix my formulas over here. Okay, 
So your repayment, as they've mentioned for you, will remain the same over those four years, okay? And your interest, your interest will always be based on what the previous balance is. So let's just copy and paste the interest formula down and your balance formula, we can also copy and paste it downwards. And there we go. So our amortization table balances, there is just a minor rounding difference over here of about a rand, but that is fine. That's not a big deal. From this amortization table, there's something that you should note. And by observing the values, you will notice that your repayments of 120 remain fixed on an annual basis. If you look at your interest column, the interest starts off at 28,000 and then it gradually decreases as you approach the end of your lease. And the same goes for your balance. Your balance of 406,000 also decreases as you go from year to year because that's how an amortization table is meant to work. So the first requirement says, prepare the journal entries for the year ended 31 December 2000. Um, in order to prepare the journal entries, you would need to basically refer back to, um, to the table because the table will give you the information that you need. So journal entries pertain to movements and we journalize movements. We do not journalize balances, okay? So that being said over there, um, as at 1 January 2000, um, technically speaking, your balance would be 406 on that day but in order for it to be 406, there had to have been a journal entry. So let's first record that journal as at 1 January 2000. That will be journal entry number one. Um, what actually happened in this case is your leased asset increased. So you debit your lease asset for 406, 466, and you credit your lease liability on your statements of FP financial position for 406. And then you insert a small narration recognition of leased asset with corresponding lease liability. Then during that same year, during 31 December 2000, we have to also account for our interest as well as our repayment. So we'll do both of these journals together in a compact journal. And we'll record this at the end of the year. Okay, so what is actually happening is our interest is an expense, it's increasing. So interest goes to profit or loss, and the amount will be 28,453. Then we're making a repayment of 120,000 rands. So the repayment impacts our bank account and we credit 120,000. And due to the interest and the bank movements, we will then have a change in our lease liability balance on the statement of financial position and this will be your balancing difference of 91,547 and your narration over here will be recognition of interest and repayment for the year. Your final requirement is part B, disclose the lease liability in the statement of financial position as at 31 December 2001. So obviously the question gives you limited information and it only requires you to disclose the lease liability in the balance sheet or SOFP. Um, 
we do have information regarding the asset, but remember the question specifically tells us to focus on the lease liability. So we start off with our headings, ABC Limited, Statement of Financial Position. It's best to just denote that it's an extract. And remember that balance sheets are done as at a specific point in time, as at 31 December. And remember in this case, Generally, in terms of the requirements of IFRS, you have to always provide comparatives unless the question specifically states not to do so. In this question over here, we do have comparative information. So the good news is that we will definitely be capturing this information for both 2000 as well as 2001. In terms of your lease disclosure, you cannot just take the balances from the amortization table and simply insert them into the balance sheet because in terms of IAS 1, it requires you that you split your leases into their non-current as well as their current portion. So on your balance sheet, you will have a non-current liability section and then you will have your lease liability and you will also then have your current liability section where you disclose your lease liability. And in terms of the amortization table, you can easily read the data off over there. For the year and the 31 December 2000, your lease liability is 314-919. And as at 31 December 2001, your lease liability is 216963. In terms of doing the split, your current liability is equal to anything that is due within the next 12 months. In both of these cases, it will be 120,000 120, rands because that's what's due within the next 12 months. And your non-current portion will simply be your total liability less your current portion, which is 194,919 in 2000. And then in 2001, it will be 216,963 minus 120,000 to give you 96,963. So that is how you disclose your lease liability in the statement of financial position. I hope that you have found this video useful. Click like and subscribe for more.